a pleasant good morning to you, Adam Handler, my partner, okay? And uh, one would never have dreamt that we would be here together, Adam, doing this show, all right? That's not true, man. I mean, we, would never? we started doing it 15 years ago, so why wouldn't we be doing it now? I like your attitude, man. I love your attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Adam Handler. You heard me speaking about him for the better part of the morning about what it is that he is doing for the immigrant community, Caribbean community, and all communities. He's, in my opinion, one of the most powerful uh, personal injury attorney. But of course, we say he is the most celebrated personal injury attorney on this station and maybe in the nation. You never know, in my opinion, by, of course, the Caribbean people and beyond. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce him right now. I know we got a lot of ground to cover today. So I want everybody to just turn up your radios, switch to Facebook if you can. I prefer if you watch us on Facebook, you see a quadrant of uh, five, you know, handsome gentlemen, okay, that, you know, I mean, I'm not a lawyer. They are the attorneys. I'm just a crazy businessman who believes in giving the community what they truly need, not what they want. So when it comes to attorneys, hey, what do I do? I got to give them the best, in my opinion. We've got Adam Handler, $100 million plus in settlement. We've got Conrad Pollock. There's nobody who knows immigration more than this man. He challenges any and everyone out there to prove him wrong. All right. We've got Nelson Madrid. We call him the Maverick. I call him the Top Gunner because God forbid you have ever been arrested and you're filing your immigration papers. Man, you better go with this guy, Nelson Madrid. He knows what he's doing. And today we've got another attorney by the name of Greg Pinto, but I'm going to let Adam introduce him also to find out more about what it is that he does. Greg, welcome to the show. Adam Handler, it's all yours, my brother. Sorry about a little bit of a late start. You know, I had to do that clearing up the cash thing as usual. Even when I do it early, it still pops up. So what's up? No problem, man. Thanks for having us on this morning. Good morning, everybody. A beautiful Tuesday morning. The sun is shining. The weather is sweet. <laughs> I am Adam Handler, the case handler. You know me. Personal injury attorney. I like to think extraordinaire, but you know, personal injury attorney that that cares. How about we use that? It rhymes anyway. And I'm here today uh, really trying to bring as much information as we can in, in a very short amount of time. But um, before I get to everybody uh, out there, just know, just at least for today, because the mug says so, I am the best dad ever. All right. That's a title that I've earned certainly these past six weeks quarantining with, with my three girls. So let's get to it. Uh, of course, Conrad, the maestro Pollock, the founder of this firm. I mean, his father founded the firm, but the, 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 the um, the, ver the variation of the firm as it exists right now was founded by my partner Conrad, my partner Fred DeSico, and my partner Brian Isaac um, back in the mid 80s. And we've been going strong ever since. Uh, we're doing immigration, real estate, personal injury, um, Nelson Madrid, the Maverick, the top gunner when it comes to deportation, uh, is here, a partner of the immigration firm. And we've also brought on, as we plan on doing once a week, uh, a special guest, somebody, uh, you know, outside of the practice groups that we normally have on, and that's uh, Greg Pinto. Greg is uh, an excellent attorney, uh, a good friend of ours. Uh, we don't have a nickname for him, but maybe, you know, Greg, when you're in a pinch, Pinto, I, I, I don't know. We'll, 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 have to see, we'll have to see how he earns it. But, um, you know, Greg's, uh, Greg's primary uh, area of, of focus is criminal law. And I'll let him talk a little bit about who he is and what he's done, but he is an asset to the firm, somebody we enjoy having um, uh, part of it. And certainly we use him all the time whenever one of our clients, whether it's an immigration client or a personal injury client has some sort of criminal issue uh, that needs to be dealt with because we know that he's gonna treat them the same way we treat our clients, like family. And, and after I think after hearing him for two minutes, you'll understand that. So without further ado, Greg, when you're in a pinch, Pinto, good morning, brother. How are you? Welcome to the show, Greg. Thank you. You know, I feel uh, honored just to be uh, a part of the show. I don't know how I feel about the nickname, so maybe we could work it up. <laughs> no, you're, you, you've got your choices, man. We'll vote, but you've got your choices. <laughs> maybe it's something will come up organically <laughs> during the show. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. You know what? Just tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, a little bit about your background and, and what what's the best advice you're giving clients right now um, in, in these unprecedented times? Sure. Well, uh, I started 
um, working on criminal law cases actually as a prosecutor. So I was sort of started on the other side. I was a prosecutor at the Brooklyn DA's office. Um, did that for seven years, prosecuted cases from the smallest, tiniest little insignificant cases, although they're significant to somebody, but for the most part, smaller cases worked all the way up to cases as high as uh, murder cases. And uh, at some point I kind of figured out that I think maybe my passion would have would have uh, been better served on in the on the private side. So I started my own practice. I've been doing criminal law, criminal defense ever since. Um, I represent clients in uh, all five boroughs of New York City. Uh, I've done some NASA and Suffolk work as well, and uh, in all phases of criminal defense and uh, all types of criminal defense cases. Um, and you know, I I really found that. I enjoy the personal side of handling a criminal defense case where you're helping somebody that sometimes, you know, I, I often say I meet somebody on the worst day of their life. They've either just been arrested or they know they're about to be arrested. And, uh, and, and it's really, uh, you know, my job is to somehow, some way make that situation better. Now, you can't avoid in every case, not every case gets dismissed. You can't make everybody's case, you know, go away with a magic wand but you can make things better. And having a quality, um, experienced, trained criminal defense attorney can, can be the difference between getting the worst possible result and a result that you can live with. Sometimes it's the difference between having a criminal record and having no criminal record. Sometimes it's the difference between jail time and probation. So um, I've really enjoyed getting to know my clients, getting personal with my clients. And at the end of the day, you know, most of the time I feel that my clients are, are, are uh, they walk away knowing that they did better than they would have ever dreamed of. Okay. Once again, folks, here we've got Greg Pinto. All right. And Greg is here. He's our criminal defense attorney. All right. Not criminal attorney. Okay. Criminal defense attorney. Now, welcome to the show. Welcome to the community. Thank um, you. You know, I, I really, I'm very happy that we have a criminal defense attorney on board. I know you're with the firm PPID. I know you have been doing great work based on what it is the other attorneys have told me, and this community needs you. Now, what I'm very happy about is that you came from the dark side to the right side, all right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, may the force be with you, all right? Because you will have quite a few cases coming from the community. There are many people out there who truly need your help. Now, I believe that you're the right person. And I'm saying that not because I know your experience based on what the attorneys have told me, but because you also understand the other side. You have been on the other side. You know what the expectations are. You know what it is that's being looked for. So I wanted for you to expand and expound on that a little bit, seeing that you have been on the prosecuting side. Now you're on the side where you're helping out, I mean, especially immigrants who, as we know, because of race, creed, color, religion, ethnicity, have been challenged challenged in certain capacities on which they should not necessarily have been. And now you're also working with immigrants who need immigration help. So let's talk a little bit more about and, that. And, and before I, before you get started, I just want to remind everybody that the same deal goes <clears throat> with Greg Pinto um, as it does with personal injury, as it does with immigration. 100% free consultations over the phone. Uh, we don't charge for information here at the firm. If you have a case and, and, and not sure where it's going, or you know somebody that has a case and you want to get a second opinion, please, it would behoove you to call this firm and, and let us know how we can help you. So I just wanted to throw that out there that if somebody didn't want to discuss a case here over the, the radio or Facebook, the, the numbers are, the, the phone lines are open to take your call for free. Thank you. Greg, welcome again. Go ahead and just expand on that. Yeah, you know, I think being a former prosecutor helps, you know, sometimes I describe it as, you know, I'm sort of like, a, it's like having a spy on your team, because, you know, I can I can take one look at the case file, and see where the holes are, what is it that the prosecutor is worried about. And sometimes we can capitalize on that, by knowing that they can't, maybe they can't prove a certain element of the case, or it's a little bit weaker, you know, you, you kind of, use that in your negotiation with the district attorney to get a better deal, right? You, you could sort of capitalize on what I can capitalize on what I know that they may be insecure about in their case and use that to get a better deal. Now, sometimes you don't have that, but I also kind of, I feel that having been a prosecutor, I can um, figure out where that line is of maybe there's some emotional 
um, connection that I can draw to from the between the prosecutor and the defendant. You know, those prosecutors look at a case and all they see is a folder with a name on it. They don't know anything about the person who's been arrested. Almost all the time they know about the victim, right? They know who they know about the grandma who got mugged on the street corner or, you know, some guy who got a bottle broken over his head in a bar fight. But what they don't ever think about is the person who's actually been arrested because that's not their job. You know, they're not all bad people, the prosecutors, some are, but, you know, but they're doing their job and their job in cases with victims are to think about getting a conviction, you know, and, and doing right for the victim. They never think about that defendant. So if you can um, instruct them a little bit or introduce them a little bit, this is somebody who has a family, who has children or do, who takes care of an elderly parent. You know, I'm really intrigued to see what happens in now in the age of coronavirus, how that's going to affect um, these types of negotiations with the prosecutors. Because, you know, on, on the one hand, I would think they're going to want to wrap up as many cases as they can. And I'm hoping that it will lead to some better deals for my clients. Um, at the other, on the other hand, there aren't many arrests being made or certainly not at the levels that we've seen pre-coronavirus. So, you know, that might mean that the prosecutors are, uh, are ready, willing and able to work on any case that they have in front of them. So I think that time will tell for that. But in general, being a, a former prosecutor just helps because, you, you know, the playbook. Absolutely. Once again, folks, a criminal defense attorney, Greg Pinto with the law firm PPID, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and DeSico. All compliments on the show, cruising with the case handler. The handler happens to be Adam Handler, a personal injury attorney who has settled Ladies and gentlemen, well over $100 million for his clients. We've got, of course, Nelson Madrid and Conrad Pollock, top immigration attorneys. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe that there happens to be any other attorney out there that has the knowledge as much as these attorneys. And I love what it is that we're doing here. This is a solid law show, okay? A solid law show. And Greg, you know, I speak with passion when it comes to you, and I'm going to tell you why. I grew up in the Bronx. And I consider myself a very good person. I think the, the worst thing that I've ever done as far as anything is concerned is speeding. And I'm not going to lie. And you're going to say you shouldn't admit that, Squeeze. But, you know, uh, as an attorney, you're going to say, ah, you shouldn't admit it. But I have sped. And I love driving fast. Okay? But Everybody you, but knows. You're, but you're DWB. That's the problem. You can't yeah. speed. No, DWB. Exactly. I, was, I was about to get to that. I mean, you know, and I remember the last time I was arrested. Listen carefully. All right. It was on 14th Street in Manhattan. And I did break the law by making a U-turn when I shouldn't have. All right. No problem. Fine. Write me the ticket. Let me go on my way. The guy said, OK, fine. You made a U he said, you made a U-turn. I said, OK, I'm sorry, officer. Um, you know, I shouldn't have. And he said, have you been drinking? No. OK, well, I believe you have been drinking. Do you want to take a breathalyzer test? No. Get out of the car. No. OK. Next thing, there are three uh, squad cars there. I'm being, you know, accosted and taken to the, the, the jail, you know. And next thing, I had to get myself a criminal defense attorney to deal with crap. So I am, situations like these happen every day in specific communities. And we don't have, we don't have good attorneys fighting for us. We don't have good attorneys who can defend the people, you know, we need more people like you. So Conrad, Nelson, Adam Handler, I'm very happy that we have got Greg Pinto. I will get the calls, okay? And people listening to it on 93.5 FM, I want for you to know that we have a criminal defense attorney ready, willing, and able to defend you because we know what's happening out there. Um, I think someone was about to say something also. Was that you, Adam? You are talking about DWB, you know that- you know. Back. It happens, all right? Driving while Latino, also. it happens, you know. Driving while, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, here true, we it's not DWB, it's DWL or DWH, while Hispanic or Latino. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fact. I can't yep. tell you how many clients we have that their deportation proceedings began because they got pulled over, either suspected of uh, driving while intoxicated or worse. Uh, license was suspended or they left their license at home or they didn't speak English well enough for the officer to be satisfied that the officer couldn't mm. claim what the, they could answer his questions and that they were lying or who knows what. We mm. see it day in and day out, people getting pulled over for whatever reason. And again, 
particularly with the immigrant community, they get pulled over. In fact, I believe yesterday we had a call yesterday from a gentleman who was talking about going to court. He is the DUI, I think, and he was debating whether to bring a lawyer or not. And, yep. and telling him he's out of his mind to not bring an attorney with him because if he gets convicted or even if he pleads, yeah, you know, take take the take the plea. You won't go to jail. You pay a fine, and then a year from now. He finds out immigration got wind of it, and he gets pulled into immigration proceedings, and he ends up getting deported, gets getting back, sent back to his country because all because he got pulled over for speeding or whatever it was, right? So it, it, it happens. It happens. And what's the point here? The point I'm making is you need a lawyer, right? Whether it's for criminal proceedings, whether it's for immigration proceedings, you need a lawyer to handle these types of things. These are not the types of matters to be handling on one's own. You know, can okay. I jump in here for one other point. One other, I'm sorry, Squeeze. One Go other ahead. point I wanted to make, and I've been saying this. It's uh, going on. I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. We, we've been doing this now at the firm. My overriding goal since I've been in practice, and I've been in practice since 1985, doing nothing but immigration. But my overriding goal during that period of time has been to surround myself with skilled professionals. I look for people that are intelligent that love the law, that love what they're doing, and have the right attitude in terms of the way they want to treat the clients, all right? As Adam always says, like family, all right? Those are the overriding goals that we have. And every time I interview somebody, an attorney or a paralegal or a receptionist, these are the questions that I ask. Why do you want to do immigration? Why do you want to get involved with the immigrant community? And if the answers aren't satisfactory, if they, if they don't tell me what I want to hear in terms of I want to do right, I want to I want to make my contribution to society, I want to help these people get to, to a point where they can b benefit their, their family, they can they can support their family, they can support their community. But I don't get the right answers. I don't hire that person. My goal has always been to surround everybody at the firm with the best possible professionals, best possible paralegal staff, best receptionist staff that we can provide to the community. And I, I like to think that we've been doing that pretty successfully. And here, here's another example of it today, bringing on Greg Pinto. It's, it's a great thing, man, uh, and, and I'll comment later on, but Nelson, I know you want to jump in here, okay, working with Greg Pinto, the criminal defense attorney, you know, in reference to immigration, all right? And I want, to, I want to say once again, this is a fabulous show, excellent show in having all these attorneys for the community and beyond. So, um, Nelson? Well, I mean, I think... I think uh, Greg himself can tell you, Greg and I work closely on many cases, um, whether it's a PPID client or it's one of Greg's clients, we always try to look for the most favorable outcome for that person. Um, Greg is fully aware of the immigration consequences anyone who is either a permanent resident or here illegally may have based on a conviction. Um, and Greg makes it a point to either walk over, give me a call, and it's something that we frequently discuss, frequently negotiate amongst ourselves um, before obviously Greg chooses what path to, to go through. And Greg, you can jump in. Well, I, th I think that is um, one of the most important aspects of uh, practicing criminal law now is having the ability to discuss the immigration consequences of a case with not just any old immigration lawyer, but the best immigration lawyers you can find. And so that's why I always feel so lucky to have you guys as resources and to talk and to talk, be able to talk through an entire case with, with experienced attorneys like yourselves, because, you know, these aren't um, small matters. These are, you know, if someone, uh, Conrad mentioned DWI cases before, those happen to be the, the, um, the, the type of criminal cases that can most easily lead to a criminal record without you even really knowing without it, it sort of it can it can go over your head because the 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 cases it can be kind of confusing and there are um there's only uh, certain options that your attorney has and a lot of times what one of those options has to be pleading guilty to a misdemeanor the only way you can get through a case that doesn't mean on every case you should be pleading guilty what i'm saying is many cases have that result um, if you get in a terrible car accident while you're driving drunk, you know, it's, it's unlikely that the prosecutor is then going to, you know, let you walk away with the case, from the case without some sort of criminal record. And we can fight and we can negotiate deals and we do all the time. But, you know, sometimes there's terrible injuries. Sometimes it's not your first one, right? There's ways that those cases end up being resolved with a criminal record. And 
the client needs to know, you need to know what the consequences of your deal are going to be. And if you have a concern about your immigration status, that's the moment to talk about your potential resolution of your case with an immigration lawyer. Maybe you're going to find out, guess what? You can't take a deal. You're going to trial and we're going to try to beat this. But you need to, you need to be informed in order to make that decision. You need to know what the consequences of your plea or going to trial will be before you can make a, a, a good decision. Absolutely. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, something that we have not done enough of since we started the show today. Welcome again, Greg Pinto. Um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I have Adam Handler of my right hand here on Cruising with the Case Handler. I've got Conrad Pollock, Managing Attorney of Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, PPID. I got Nelson Madrid, the Maverick, okay, another immigration attorney. And as I said, Greg Pinto, our criminal defense attorney. I have not mentioned the phone number enough. Anyone that's out there, you have heard the different areas of law that we're speaking on, call this number. Even if you don't need it now, call the number, dial it, let it ring 10, 15 seconds and store it. If you need immigration help, call the number now, get on the line, set an appointment. If you need criminal defense help, call the number now, ask for Greg, set an appointment. The same thing with Adam Handler the man who has settled well over $100 million. And I will keep saying that because I don't know many attorneys that can do what it is that he has done. So right now, the number is 844-774-3529. Every single person that's listening to this radio show, that's watching us on Facebook, need to have this number in their phone, need to pass this number on to their friend, their family members, even their foes. Dial the number. It's 844 844- Seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. I'm going to hand the reins back to Adam Handler for a minute before we get to the top of the hour. Um, Adam, you okay over there, man? Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm just sorry. Uh, just uh, clearing my throat. Let me clear my throat, as we say at those parties. But in all seriousness, you know, this is this is exactly you know what we're about. You know, we're, we're pressed for time in the first thirty minutes of this show because we're trying to get as much information out there as possible to the people listening in ninety three point five. But I think by now, most people out there know exactly who we are, what we do, and most importantly how we do it, right? This is how we do it. We're going with all the, the song cliches today. We, we are different than other law firms because not only are we striving for excellence, not only are we striving for the most successful possible outcome in your case, whether it's personal injury, immigration, criminal, real estate, matrimonial, but we're doing it in a way that we wanna make you feel comfortable as the client. You are the customer. This is, a, we are professionals, but I tell you, we're still to some degree a service-based industry because our clients come to us for guidance, come to us for help, and of course, expect the best possible representation that we can provide, right? We can never guarantee a successful result, but unless you have that number saved, we will never know about you. We don't hang out at the jails. We don't hang out at the precincts. We don't hang out at the federal building. We don't hang out at the hospital. We don't come up to you to see the accident. Other lawyers do that are desperate for clients, that are desperate to cut corners and figure a way to make a few hundred dollars. We are fortunately built much more soundly than that, that we don't have to worry about the specific individual case. We're worried about helping the community at whole. And that's why we're offering free consultations across the board for every practice of law. Why? Because the community that has embraced us, we are embracing back. And if that's important to you, your family, your neighbor, your, your, your church member, your, your, your cousin, then you'll have the number saved. God forbid you need it. But if you do, you'll be connected to real lawyers making a real difference. 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529, or easy to remember, 844-PPID-LAW. It's the phone call that literally can make all the difference and change your life and your family's life forever. I know that sounds dramatic, but if you're locked up and you can't earn anything and you're locked up and then you're deported or you're in an accident and you can't work anymore and have a lifetime of medical bills, 
you better make sure that you're riding a thoroughbred to the finish line of that case. And that's exactly what we try to be here at PPID. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Once again, if you're just joining us before we get to the top of the hour, we're going to be taking immigration questions on the other side. So get to Facebook right now. David squeeze Anarchy or the Case Handler Space or, or Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, PPID Spade. Greg Pinto, the criminal defense attorney, is here. Conrad Pollock is here. And, of course, Nelson Madrid and myself and Adam Handler, we're here ready, willing, and able to answer those questions. 844-774-3529. Once again, 93.5 FM listeners, we're ending the radio show now. We're continuing on Facebook. Join us on Facebook. David Squeeze-Adinke or The Case Handler. Once again, 844-774-3529. Prior results do not guarantee similar outcome, but obviously, you know I say, go with PPID. 844-774-3529. Nine. We're going to get to the other side right now. We're going to be speaking on public charge, right? It's yeah, nine o'clock. About that. There you go. It's nine o'clock. All right. It's time to get into some questions. Once again, Greg, welcome. Uh, Conrad Nelson, let's jump off on talking about the declaration of self-sufficiency, right? Please, before we get there, I just wanted to make one more comment about what we were just talking about. You know, yeah. um, there are lawyers out there, you know, you can walk down the street in Queens or in Brooklyn or whatever, you know, to the corner guy, you know, walk up, walk up the two flights of stairs to his office. And, you know, you tell him, well, I have an immigration problem. I can help you. Well, I also have a real estate problem. You know what? I could do that, too. Also, you know, my sister got arrested last night. Well, you know, I can handle that as well. You know, that's not how we do things. Right? I don't believe that a lawyer, that in order for a lawyer to be qualified, in fact, whatever the position is, you're not going to tell your carpenter to go and fix your air conditioner. All right. You're not going to tell your, your air conditioning repairman to go fix a leak in my boat. Right? That's not how it works. You need professionals that specialize in a particular area. And that's been another uh, mod modus operandi, let's say. There's another legal word for you yeah. that I've tried to follow throughout my career. You know, I do immigration. Yeah, I know a little bit about divorce. I know a little bit about personal injury. But I leave that to the guys that know how to do that stuff. I do immigration work and nothing but. And that's why... I know what I'm talking about, and I pretty much have seen pretty much everything out there in terms of immigration. But I walk down the hall when I have a criminal case, and there's Greg. Greg, Greg, Greg knows what he's doing. He knows how to handle criminal matters. I have a client who gets into an accident. I'm not going to take care of that case myself. I'm going to walk her down the hall to Adam's office because Adam handles that. And or Fred DeSico was on last week. I can't tell you how many clients we've had that we've gotten them green cards, and then they decide to go into business, open a bar, open a restaurant buy a house, can't afford to pay their rent, or the landlord can't, isn't collecting, I walk him down the other the other way down the office and let them, let them talk to Fred. My point here is that we have professionals that, 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 that handle the specific matters for which they've been trained and for which they have experience. We are not jacks of all trades. And if you go to a lawyer who is a jack of all trades, you should turn around and walk away because those are the kind of guys who get you into trouble. That's not how we flow, all right? That's not how we operate. So on that note, Nelson, you could talk about the public charge issues. I was going to defer to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm losing my voice here. I've been talking too much. So um, basically effective February 24th, 2020, um, USCIS is now requiring anyone applying for adjustment of status uh, to file what is called uh, USCIS form I-944. It's uh, basically a declaration of self-sufficiency. And what that form is about is basically making sure that if you do get a green card, you will not be a public charge. By public charge, they mean you will not turn to the government for any benefits such as Medicaid, Section 8, um, food stamps, any of that. Um, the difference is, you know, again, this has always been the law. The difference is now there is an application with supporting evidence that needs to accompany your application. Uh, the application is 19 pages. It requires a lot of financial documents, um, such as tax transcripts, credit report, um, you know, bank statements, credit card statements, um, car loan I, statements. Actually, Nelson, I, I, pull, I, I pulled up a list. Of, I, I can never remember all these different things. These are programs that are included in the government's determination as to whether or not you will constitute a public charge. Any federal, state, local, or 
or uh, cash assistance for any kind of income maintenance, supplemental social security income, that's SSI, uh, temporary assistance for needy families, TINF, TEMP, uh, state cash benefits for income maintenance, supplemental nutritional assistance program, SNAP, uh, public housing, Section 8 housing vouchers, Section 9 project rental housing, non-emergency federal Medicaid. These are all types of programs that if you have received any one of those, they can be, they will be weighed against you in a negative manner to adversely determine that you will become a public charge. And that, that applies whether or not you are working or you, you and your spouse are working or you have an affidavit of support from a relative who's going to provide additional support for you. Even if you have all those things, if you qual if you have received those types of benefits that I just listed, and that's just a partial list, there are more. If you've received those types of benefits in the past couple of years, you can and likely will be denied. And if you get denied, after you apply for adjustment of status, they deny your case because they claim you're gonna become a public charge. That's not the end of it. They put you into removal proceedings more likely than not. In the old days, case like that, two to three years, two, three years ago, let's say pre-Trump, that type of case gets denied and it gets put aside and that's the end of it for the most part. That's no, no longer the case. On the contrary, as I've been saying, this administration, they are looking to say no. That's the way they go. If there is a doubt, say no. And it's like this, you get denied, you will very likely, more likely than not, end up in removal proceedings, and then you'll have a serious problem. So- Let me squeeze the number here, gentlemen, all right? Because I know I'm gonna get beat up for that, all right? Once again, folks, you're tuning into the Cruising with the Case Handler, hosted by yours truly, David Squeezanaki and Adam Handler, and of course, our co-host, the attorneys today, Greg Pinto, Conrad Pollock, which you just heard, and Nelson Madrid. The phone number to call, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. If you need an immigration attorney, the consultation right now is absolutely free. You just need to dial the number now. 844-774-3529. If you need a criminal defense attorney, the consultation right now is free. Just call him at 844-774-3529. Three five two nine. If you need a personal injury attorney, God forbid you get hurt in an accident, all you need to do is reach out to the case handler, Adam Handler, at 844-774-3529. Nelson, on to you, and then I have a few questions if yeah, you guys... Yeah, I just want to jump in, actually. Um, I had a call yesterday from someone who went to, quote-unquote, a family friend or a friend who prepared uh, immigration papers for them back in November. It's now May. And basically their question was, I haven't received anything. Is this normal? <laughs> um, I said, no, it's, it's, not, actual, normal. it's, it's not normal. Uh, I don't know that anyone actually ever filed anything for you because technically after you file something, you should get receipts two or three weeks thereafter. So the person's follow-up question was, does that mean that now I am subject to that declaration of self-sufficiency. Yes, you are, because technically now you're filing after February 24th, 2020. And, you know, this is a prime example of, uh, you know, unfortunately cheap doesn't always come out cheap. You buy cheap, you pay twice. Yeah. If you get what you pay for in life. That's how I look right. at it. You get what you pay for in life, ladies and gentlemen. So everyone that's watching this, okay, like I said, you may not need the number now, but I promise you and I guarantee you with all the different areas of law that we're talking on, not that we want to get in the situation, but you will need an attorney at some point in your life or a friend or a family, all right? So dial the number, store the number for Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Just say, of course, you know, cruising with a case handler is where you heard the number, 844 Seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Adam Handler, you're the case handler. Can we get a true success story before we get to um, a question? Or let me ask a question while I set you up, okay? And then um, we can get to a true success story of someone who you actually represented where personal injury is concerned. Quick question here for one of the immigration attorneys. Um, what happens if someone did not enter the U.S. legally, but now is working for a company that wants to sponsor you? 
Here's the problem. Um, that person, they entered without a visa. Well, actually, in this type of situation, it doesn't even matter. But they entered illegally. They have an employer that wants to sponsor them. What they need to do uh, would be to go through what's called the PERM process. What that is, the employer makes an application through the Department of Labor to demonstrate that they can't find American workers to do that particular job, whatever the job is. Let's say he's working as a, a construction worker. The employer is required to advertise in a newspaper, show that they've tried to find American workers. Once they satisfy the Labor Department that they cannot find American workers, they can actually offer the job to that individual, and eventually he can apply to the Immigration Service once the Labor Department approves his application, and eventually get his green card. Now, that's ideally how the situation will work, but... Um, the problem here is that the gentleman we're talking about entered illegally. Therefore, whatever case he does, he cannot get his green card in the United States. He has to leave the United States in order to finish that case. However, because he's here illegally, once he leaves the country, he's subject to what's called a 10-year bar. Um, unfortunately, there is no way around that bar in, a, in an employment-based case. So the short answer to, or actually I should say the long answer to a short question Yes, the employer can sponsor him. However, he's going to have to go back to his country for 10 years before he can get that green card through the employer. And I doubt the employer is going to want to wait that long. Now, there's one exception, one exception. If that individual has a spouse or a parent who is a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident, he can apply for a waiver of that 10-year bar before he leaves. So if he does have that spouse or parent, he would apply for a waiver once the application was approved by the Labor Department of Immigration. Once he gets the waiver, which takes six to eight months, then we can get him an interview in his country and then he go get his green card. That is the only exception to that rule for the most part. There are one or two other small details there, but for purposes of our, the, the question that was asked, that's his situation. So kind of a bleak situation, unfortunately. Absolutely. Once again, folks, Conrad Pollock speaking on immigration. You also heard from Nelson Madrid speaking on immigration. Before I, I, I switch it over to Adam in 10 seconds, um, Greg, someone says it's, it's, you're like LA law, but without all the intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to squeeze that in there. So once again, folks, Greg Pinto, our criminal defense attorney is here. If you have criminal defense questions, it's best that you actually call him directly, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. With criminal defense questions, I don't like it when people actually post uh, and put those on Facebook, but I'd prefer if you just call him at 844-774-3529. Speak to him privately and confidentially on those matters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember to reach out to him. Greg, quick Please. word before Adam. Yeah. I, I just want to say, we actually, it's the opposite. I'm not like LA law. I want to take the drama out. I want you to, if you come to me for your criminal defense case, I want to explain to you exactly what you're facing, what your options are. I don't like my clients to leave my office guessing what may happen. And I feel, honestly, I feel like I, a lot of the time I get hired by my clients for that very reason. I don't sugarcoat things. I'm going to, if you're facing, you know, criminal defense cases, sometimes you're facing a really uphill battle, a really tough case. You may be looking at jail time. You may, you may have a case where it's a mandatory some amount of jail time, or you may be looking at a case where it's going to be really hard to win at trial. But the worst thing that can happen to you in that situation is to have a lawyer lie to you just to get a check. And unfortunately, you know, it is, you know, the, this business does lend itself to that type of, you know, kind of shysty lawyer. And, and, and you have to be really careful who you give your money to. You want to you want to hire somebody that has the experience to be able to um, give you an idea of what may come out of your case. I may not be able to predict everything to the letter, but usually from the first moment I hear about a case, I can give you a pretty good idea of where we are heading of deciding whether this is a case to take to trial or a case to try to resolve right away. Um, and, you know, that, so, so when you say it's like LA law without all the intimacy, it's a great line, but I try to take the drama out and I don't want anybody to think they're going to call me and get a script. This isn't, we don't operate on television. This is, this is real life. So we try to make it drama free for all our clients. Love that. Greg Pinto, criminal defense attorney right here on cruising with the case handler and speaking about cruising with them. 
As David Squeeze Anik here, let's hand it over to the case handler and get a true success story. Adam. Absolutely, brother. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know I love talking about the cases that we've worked on because we're really changing lives. Now talk about drama. Can you imagine um, being uh, in your car with your wife and uh, going on and about your business on a weekend and all of a sudden, boom, somebody runs into the back of your van causing the damage that you see here in this photograph. Um, wow. You go to the hospital, all of a sudden you're having a shoulder surgery, she's having a shoulder surgery, and the car that hit you is a New York City taxi cab. And I don't know if anybody's aware out there, but usually New York City taxi cabs are not driving in a manner in which we would all deem to be appropriate. And there's only certain insurance companies that insure those cabs. And rest assured, those insurance companies are, are you know, as far as I'm concerned, at the bottom of the barrel as far as how they operate their businesses and what they believe fair compensation to their clients is. So we were we knew as soon as we got the police report and knew what insurance company we were up against, we knew we were gonna have to really prepare this case like it's the biggest case in the world in order to get uh, fair compensation for the client. That's exactly what we did. And and th this is this is a wonderful case in which uh, we, we did exactly that. And if you squeeze, wouldn't mind reading that quote. You know, you know, that's the one thing I don't do. Okay. All right. right here. What? Okay. The team. Uh, make the screen bigger, man. Dude. I, it's big enough. I, it's full of my screen, man. The team did extremely well. The case handler is in. Dude, I can hardly see the damn screen here. I don't know. All right. So I'm going to read it then. We're going to oh, work, oh, we're gonna oh, work oh. on that. I don't know. I, I, it's, yeah, it's the team did extremely well. The case handler is number one in my book. They are the best to deal with. And it's like you have a family with them. Now that I've superimposed my screen. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Robbie from Elmont, New York. I mean, we get these quotes all the time on Adam Handler. And he gets a high off of them. Okay. <laughs> For him, you know, he's always saying, you know, he doesn't want anyone to get in an accident. And like he said, he would be the worst businessman. And he genuinely feels that way. He doesn't want anyone getting hurt, but God forbid you get hurt, he wants to fight for you. So when you get a comment like this, the team did extremely well. The case handler is number one in my book. They are the best to deal with. And it's like you have a family with them. Mr. and Mrs. Robbie, I'm very happy you went to the case handler, Adam Handler. So ladies and gentlemen, when you hear him, he's not tooting his own horn. No, he's not. It's the truth. And feel free to go to his website, thecasehandler.com, and see all the true success stories. See all the testimonies. And you should think to yourself, why would I want to use another attorney? Go for the man that I used to call the shark. Go for the man that goes for the juggler all the time. He's called the case handler. Call him at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. You're a thinking personal injury. You get hurt. You need one man because you've got one chance, ladies and gentlemen, and one choice. So make it 844-774-3529 and make it the case handler, Adam Handler. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, at a few minutes after the hour, I want to remind you that we are cruising with the case handler each and every single morning, and we are here. Gentlemen, you guys ready again? Adam, you done? What do you, I, I can, you know me, I can talk all morning about this, but it's important that everybody knows that we're not just a personal injury firm, we're immigration, we're criminal defense. So I enjoy listening to, to my partners and, and, uh, and Greg Pinto. Greg Pinto is actually of counsel to the firm. Um, I don't want to, there any be mistake about that. All right, you um, can still get he, me here. He, he, <laughs> is, uh, he is an integral part of the firm, but he has his own practice. He, uh, his office is at our office, 225 Broadway on the third floor. And he's somebody that we rely on uh, with, with full confidence as if he were, uh, you know, let's call it our own blood. Uh, so we're, we're, we'll have him on repeatedly um, throughout this show's existence, hopefully uh, for a very long time. And he does some incredible things. So I, we can listen to one of his stories. We can take an immigration question. I know the phone calls were coming in this morning, people booking those free consultations. So uh, let's go with uh, what you think the people want to hear this beautiful Tuesday morning. 
Once again, folks, Adam Adler, always the charmer, of course, you know, making sure everybody is good. All right, 844-774-3529, 844-774-3529. All right, here's a, an immigration question as we switch it to immigration. Two months ago, I filed for my I-751 application after being married for two years. Last week, my husband asked me for a divorce, but said, by the way, uh, the firm handles uh, matrimonial issues also, but said he would wait until after my green card is approved. That's interesting. Can I get divorced while the application is pending and still get my green card? Or should I take my, hus my husband up on his offer to wait? Always interesting. This, this is one of the reasons why I love immigration. Always interesting stories. All right. So, gentlemen, immigration attorneys, how do you respond to that question? Do you want to answer that, Mr. Pollack? Oh, I'll leave that one to you, Mr. Madrid. <laughs> um, I'm civil this morning. Okay, Mr. okay. Mr. Madrid. No, before you, you first. So, <laughs> so basically, an I-751 is an application to remove the conditions. That's typically filed when you have a conditional green card. That is a green card valid for two years. Um, the way you get a green card, a two-year green card, is basically when you apply for immigration benefits and you haven't been married for more than two years, you basically get a two-year green card. Three months before the two years, you're supposed to file what's called an I-751. Again, it's actually an application to remove the conditions and become a permanent resident. Um, either you file that jointly, jointly being that it's you and your spouse, you're still together, and obviously you are both going to proceed with removing the conditions, or there are exceptions. Um, if you are no longer with your husband, then you need to fall under an exception. Um, I do not recommend you basically saying you're together when in fact you're not together. Um, you know, immigration can look into this, does look into cases like this. And obviously, again, lying is not something I would recommend or misleading immigration by any means is not something I would recommend nor something we would do. I would recommend them coming to see you guys. That's what I would recommend. Oh, she needs me, uh, what, her, what her, her options are. So it would behoove me not to tell, okay, <laughs> to call, you know, 844 774 3529, Nelson. That's 844 774 3529. At least get a free consultation. But if I were her, <laughs> I would. <laughs> Adam is funny, man. By the way, folks, I'm just looking at what Adam's got on the screen here. <laughs> By the way, seriously, though, call 844-774-3529 and speak with Nelson on this. Speak with Conrad on this. Yes, Conrad. If I could just jump in for a second and just add one point. Um, one of the exceptions in a situation like that was being that was described, um, it is possible for that person to get her green card, even if they separate and get divorced. Now, separating is not enough. They would have to be divorced. And in that in that case, once they are divorced, they would submit a new I-751 application and basically request an exemption from the bona fide marriage uh, documentation saying that we're now divorced, but it was a valid marriage while it lasted. And how do you prove that? With documentation. They need to show that they actually lived together. Maybe they had children. Uh, maybe they were joint documents. They owned a house together, joint bank accounts, whatever insurance policies, um, they would need to show that the marriage was valid while it lasted and it just ended in divorce. That is one way that they can separate and divorce and still get the green card. So that, that it's a common scenario. We see it pretty frequently. Um, as Nelson said, if they're no longer together, they should not be proceeding with that case because if they get caught, if they go forward with it and they get caught, they'll both get in trouble. What, the, the, the person will not get her green card and could and very likely will end up in removal proceedings and her husband could also be prosecuted criminally. And then he may. <laughs> there yep. you go. There you go. So once again, we got to remind you, they've got a matrimonial department, so make sure you reach out to them. The law firm, PPID, call them now, 844-774-3529. We're about to conclude in a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, make sure you make the call. The consultations are free, 100% free. So why not call them off the air privately and confidentially and speak with them about your situation? No, you're not gonna get a one hour consultation or a half hour consultation. Come on, they gotta see a lot of people, okay? And, and honestly, why would you wanna sit with them on the phone for 30 minutes? If you're sitting with someone on the phone past 15 minutes, 
you definitely need to go in and retain those attorneys. You got big problems. You got big doo doo. You probably need a, a backhoe to dig yourself out of. So let's not fool ourselves. Not let's not be silly. Okay, just do the consultation, retain them, take care of it. You don't ever want to represent yourself. Okay, Adam is about to throw it up. You don't ever want to represent yourself. If you need legal help and advice, you obviously and evidently need to hire the attorney. So let's not fool ourselves. I'm not fooling myself, okay? If I need a heart surgery, what do you think I'm going to go do? Let me go lay down on the counter and get my scalpel and start slicing myself up. Hell no. No. I am going to find the money. I'm going to go work my ass off, get another job, three jobs, four jobs, whatever, you know. I'm going to find the money. Okay, call up Adam today. Hey, got some money, man. I need to go hire um, uh, Greg Pinto. I need to go hire, you know, Conrad Pollock. Okay, and I'm speculating here. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking hypothetically rather. Um, make sure you make the call. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Once again, we're speaking on personal injury. We're speaking on immigration. We're speaking on criminal defense this morning. Let me ask two more questions and then we'll conclude. Thank you guys for what you've been doing. I got married in 2015 and filed for my green card, which I received in December of the same year. I filed a petition for condition removal end of 2017. I did my biometrics in 2018, after which my case status stated that my case was transferred to another office. And I am still yet to receive my green card or hear back from USCIS. Also, my husband and I are currently separated what do, I, what do you think this means for my case and is the wait time normal? Well, yours, Nelson. Um, yeah, this is similar actually to the previous question that someone yeah. else asked. Um, you know, anytime you deal with immigration, it's a roll of the dice, right? Um, there are quote unquote standard processing times. Unfortunately, that's just, never the case. Um, if her case has been, pen, you know, I've seen cases also pen for some time. Um, you know, uh, this is where a lawyer comes in, right? Uh, her lawyer could actually contact immigration, find out what's going on. Um, you know, if she doesn't have a lawyer, it's something she should do. You know, I, I don't, you know, if in fact everything's been filed and she was interviewed and subsequent to that, you know, obviously her marriage is falling apart. I think it's a, a different situation. Um, you know, there is a possibility they could call her back for another interview. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard. You know, there's not necessarily a black and white answer. You know, my advice they to her. Call. Would, That's what I think they should do. Right. My advice to her would simply be she should contact immigration on her own and find out what's going on with that. You know, but again, I mean, there are cases that take longer than others for reasons unknown. Sometimes the file is just sitting somewhere catching dust. Um, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily read into it. Again, it's a very common occurrence that cases just tend to languish with immigration. Gotcha. 844-774-3529. Um, I'll, I'll pop this in and then you can, this is a quick one. Um, uh, let me bring up my, my phone here. Pretty much they're saying, do they have to leave the United States? If I'm already in the United States, do I have to leave and re-enter the U.S. if I want to change visas? That's the final question for now. Well, Conrad? If the person is already in I'm the sorry, United States. I'm sorry, can you States, say that again? I missed that. If I am in the United States, okay, do I have to leave the United States and re-enter, okay, if I want to change visas? Well, first, helpful if I knew what the person had to begin with. Yeah. But the short answer is, if the person entered the country legally and is and it's still in legal status, so they entered as a tourist, given six months, they're still in that first status. They have it hasn't expired. Um, they apply to change or extend their status while in the United States. They don't have to leave. Um, there are a few exceptions. Sometimes with students, it's necessary that they leave. The types of people sometimes it's necessary they leave. But if she, if she entered legally and is still in status, they can apply status while in the U.S. They do not have to leave and re-enter. That's gotcha. the general answer. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, folks. Once also, I want, go on. I, want, I want to throw out to that last person, that person has been waiting for years. Frequently, look, that's a very common situation with immigration. It's an extremely common situation with persons that file their own. All right? Yes, 
as an attorney, we see cases like that as well, especially with 751s. 751s have the habit of taking more than they should. Right? It's just the way, I don't really know why that is, but they've always taken longer than they since they came into effect 30 years ago, 1990, actually, when that law was, was passed. But in certain situations, it is possible to sue the Immigration Service. It's called a mandamus action. We frequently take immigration to court, federal court, to sue them basically saying, hey, it's over time. It's been two, three, four years, whatever. We should have a decision here. You've done everything you've done. and waiting patiently. It's time for a decision. And if you don't, we're going to take you into court and sue you and force you to make a decision. Now, in a situation like that was described, if they've since separated, that's difficult. Because if you take them to court, immigration will say, well, now they're separated, so we're gonna deny the application. So that's a little bit of a dicey situation, but very often when immigration doesn't act promptly or doesn't do what they're supposed to do, we take them to court, all right? And we have, I mean, that's one of the things that Mr. Madrid, the Maverick handles, and we have a few other litigators in our immigration department that also love to go to federal court. They're just waiting for reasons to take immigration to federal court. So that is an option at times as well, though not in this particular case. They're itching. They're itching. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now 930. And I want to say thanks to all the attorneys on the panel here. You just heard from Conrad Pollock, a managing partner at the firm. Yes, he works. He gets into it, as you can see. You heard from Nelson Madrid. Also, of course, the Maverick dealing with a lot of removal proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the two immigration attorneys we've got on this morning. You heard from Greg Pinto, new to the game of the show of itself, but not new to the game of criminal defense attorney as a criminal defense attorney. So make sure if you have a run-in with the law, you call 844-774-3529. See, showing you the number, 844-774-3529. In the community which I grew up, it always happens, man, in the Bronx. So I got to say, reach out to him. We've got someone good, ready, willing, and able to represent you and be there for you. We've got the man who is second to none, all right? He's true to the game of personal injury, which is a game that he does not like because people get hurt, but he's always there to fight for you. So once again, I'm about to give out the number. And also, I want to say this quickly. Construction accidents, if you ever get hurt on a construction site, please, for God's sake, do not use any other attorney but Adam Handler, all right? You will find out why. You can speak to him and find out why. Call this number, um, ladies and gentlemen, for the firm, all right, for any of the attorneys here, and the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. In my years of doing this show, I've always realized that this show, we could do this show for five hours, for eight hours, for 10 hours, nonstop. The questions will just keep coming. All right. But I'm very happy that we've got the show together, a real law show in helping people in so many different capacities. Make the call to the firm. You only need one number, ladies and gentlemen, one firm. OK, because you've got that one choice, one chance. Really? Yes, you do. To make that call and do the right thing. 844-774-3529. And the consultation is free. Call now. Off the air. 844-774-3529. Yes, the phone consultation, Nelson, is free. 844-774-3529. Any final words, gentlemen? I uh, actually just want to say a very happy birthday to a loyal listener, loyal client, um, Lorna. She's out there. She watches every day, and uh, we wish you all the best. She's been going through a tough time right now, but we're sending lots of love. Thank you for su your support. Uh, Lorna, thank you for your support. Everybody, please tip your waiter, share the page, comment on the page. Uh, help this spread. Uh, we need things, good things to spread. And uh, if we can be part of that, then I think we've done our job every morning. So thank you so much for listening. Yep. This is what we want to spread. We want to spread some love. Also, uh, Feliz, Feliz, Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Uh, yeah. Feliz Mexicano Sofuera. Cinco de Mayo. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. I feel sorry for Corona today. Hey, I just want to <laughs> say, stay away from the cops right now, everybody, because... You know, in addition to how dangerous they normally are to you, uh, right now, they're a coronavirus vector. I've been speaking to some buddies in the, on the police force that are telling me, you know, it is going around the precincts like you wouldn't believe. Oh, wow. um, sometimes they're being forced to come back to work if they don't have symptoms. Some, obviously, as we know from uh, every segment of society, not everyone knows that they have um, right. the virus. So 
you know, now's not the time to, to you know, lose control and have to force yourself to be um, interacting with police officers. Obviously, the normal reasons is, you know, that you could end up with a, an arrest, a false arrest, uh, a beating uh, and worse. But now, you know, you could end up contracting a virus that could, you know, devastate you or your family. So, you know, now's the time, you know, it may not be good for my business right now, but business will come back. Stay safe, stay indoors, stay away from those cops. Got you. And gentlemen, I want to say thank you all so much for being here. And ladies and gentlemen, we have attorneys because we have rights. Yes, we have attorneys because we have rights. And now we have PPID. Now we have the case handler. Thank you all, gentlemen, for being here. We must remind you this has been an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm of Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Masico, located at 225 Broadway on the third floor. The third floor. And make sure you reach out to them at 844 774 3529. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome, but why would you want to go anywhere else when you watch this show, listen to the show, and we've got great attorneys here? 844 774 3529. Share this link, please. Share it with someone. Tell them to watch it. You know, tune in for their immigration questions to be answered. Tune in to find out more about criminal defense um, attorney Greg Pinto. Tune in, obviously, to find out more about our real estate attorney, Fred DeSico. Tune in, obviously, for the case handler. Who's the man? You know, okay, who's the man? All right. Thank you all so much. With that said, we conclude and we'll catch up with you tomorrow, same time, same place, same era. Here we go.